patching. All the cables sticking everywhere. I kind of love it. In this video, I want to tell you a little bit about how I patch and what happens when you add a new module to the mix. That's got to change things, right? So patching. Patching is when you take cables like these and you're putting them into jacks, connecting modules to different modules. In the process, you're usually making some sort of spaghetti that's mildly overwhelming. By the end, some wonderful sounds come out. Most times I start from scratch and that's after taking out all the cables and hanging them back up. I guess I just like the idea of clearing up and starting from nothing. It keeps my mind clear and I know everything that's going on because I'm doing it right then. You can always go back and trace cables, but there's a little bit less flow there. Starting from scratch, sometimes I'll have a vague idea or a vibe or certain modules that I might want to put together or certain techniques that I might want to use. Those ideas might come from anywhere, from when I'm falling asleep, taking a walk, maybe something unsolved in my last patch. It might even come from another video that I saw and maybe I had a new idea spurred on from that. It's really about having the exact modules that I've seen though, and it's more about adapting things to what I have and making workarounds and just seeing where I get from there. Most of the time though, I'm just off on my own adventure, not really having a clear destination or an idea where I'm gonna go, except for maybe adding a beat or some sort of percussion at the end. By the time I'm nearing the end of the patch or I'm out of patch cables, I'm usually hearing something pretty engaging, which is great. That's just through the process of listening and adding, taking away, adjusting values, and following what I'm hearing each step of the way. I meander, I go on tangents, I do little jams and then I get back to patching. To a certain degree, every patch that I do has elements that are similar. I mean, I'm the one that's patching, but to me, I'm exploring something new every time. I'm going to different destinations and using each one as an opportunity to create something different that I haven't heard before. For me, patching is kind of like an act of discovery. I'm finding the music or molding it into something from some degree of chaos. There's twists and turns and things that work out the way that you thought that they would and others that are completely different. I tend to run with those changes, those differences. I don't worry about the exact end result and I rarely have the feeling that I've missed the mark somehow because there isn't really one to begin with. Even when all the patching is done, playing it opens up new opportunities. Sometimes by ironing out sequences, adjusting values, or changing the clock speed can make something new that you never really intended. I often refine things on modules like the Bard Quartet or Steffi towards the end of a patch, just because it gives me more places that the patch can go while I'm playing. I might even reroute some cables or steal the cable from one place for another place. I feel like I often run out of cables. In the end, it's really wonderful to be able to twist a knob and be surprised by the patch, either by timbre, or a set of notes that are strung together. It's just a really wonderful feeling, especially when you didn't write it or specifically set it up to be that way. Those are definitely the moments that make me smile and really appreciate this wild modular experience.
wonder why would I meander and patch every time I want to make music. To that I'd say I just love the process of patching and yeah, discovering music just for my ears right at that moment. It's almost like the process is a key part of the enjoyment for me. And it's really calming and gives my brain just one thing to focus on and all the clutter sort of falls away for a bit. I definitely find that I need that the last couple of years. I'm not worrying about misplacing settings, plugins, updating software, though that creeps in a little bit with digital modules, but that's okay. The patch may end up staying for a couple of days, so I might jam a little bit before I crash for the night or on a break from work, but I don't really hesitate at any moment to pull it all down and start from scratch. At the end, I like that I just unpatch everything and say goodbye. Maybe I'll have recorded it, maybe not. Sometimes I have this feeling like I want things to last forever. It's so unrealistic, isn't it? This is a good practice for me of letting go. I've actually been finding it kind of fascinating and almost a beautiful part of the process. Anyone working in a DAW isn't likely to work on a piece of music for a couple hours, bounce it down to stereo, and delete all the source tracks. That makes modular interesting for sure. Not for everyone for that reason, and I think that's good. Everyone will do things a little bit different. If you do modular stuff and have opinions on this or want to share, feel free down in the comments. I'm still relatively new to all this and patching in a pretty simple way. Though I have been listening to Hanging Out with Audio Files lately, hosted by Jamie Liddell, just learning about the complexities of the looper he made in modular, it's just wild. Something that changes the path of exploration is when I put a new module in the case. What? It's definitely exciting and equally disruptive, maybe. Patching becomes a lot less open-ended. It's more focused on one module, figuring out all the things it can do, both intended and unintended. It can take a good while to figure all that out. And I think that's a good thing. It feels like a good pace to take modular a little slowly. No matter how I try, the discovery phase never seems to be complete. I think that's because there's endless ways to approach each module. And as you add modules, those possibilities just increase. Patching in a more open-ended way helps to reduce some of the overwhelm you might feel of trying to figure everything out all at once. That and building up your case pretty slow is helpful. In the last video, I mentioned I got a new utility, and this is it, the Jasmine and Olive Trees traffic. I feel like I need to provide some clarity in this weird YouTube music space, but here it goes. I heard about this module and picked it up on pre-order. I paid full price. I have not been in contact with the manufacturer in any sort of way, and this is not a sponsored video. I'm not saying that in future there might not be some, but this isn't it. That being said, my patching in this video will probably revolve around the traffic, just because I figured that would be most interesting. I think this is the first module from Jasmine and Olive Trees, and I think it's been pretty popular, and that makes a ton of sense. With modular, there's lots of things to modulate, and that brings about a lot of opportunity. Timbre, sequences, timing, envelopes, all sorts of stuff. But it's easier to have those things continually evolving or static. Momentary predictable changes can be pretty hard or complicated. Sequencers can get you part of the way there, but it's not quite the same. I mean, if you have a flagship sequencer, it might have mod lanes and stuff like that. I don't have anything like that though. But it's different if you're dealing with just simple sequencers. I'd imagine one point would go towards a DAW in this situation, but uh, I don't know because I don't work in one. Traffic is basically a preset module offering three sets of three values. There are three rows of three knobs and those knobs send a value out to the output for that row. You can send a trigger to any of the inputs correlating to the columns, and that will send the knob value of that column to the output. There's two additional bits, actually maybe three. The first thing is that there's a switch on the module to change the outputs to unipolar, which is positive only, or bipolar, which is positive and negative. The second thing is there's a switch right here that randomizes the outputs in two different flavors. This is exactly what I mean about playing around with the patch once it's all set to go. There's a random element in the switching, but then you can get right back to what you had initially. Not to mention, you can change things up completely just by sending different trigger sequences into the inputs. I feel like anyone with a noise engineering voice would just love this thing. A module like the BAA could be all of your percussion without the need of it just being random glitchy drums or being just a kick in your patch. Actually, I've always wanted a BIA, and traffic kind of makes me want to get one. Although, maybe I should jump on that pretty quick, since they just got discontinued. Oh yeah, the third thing for traffic. 
there's a whole other module hiding underneath this thing. All you have to do is change some switches on the back and then you have water. And it even comes with an overlay in the box. I love the added value. Water is an eight step sequencer, but it's delivered in three different phases. So you basically have three sequences trailing each other. I love simple sequencers. So this one having three phases makes it really interesting to me. It was a bit too much to get to in this video, but maybe I'll check it out and do a video on it at some point. Oh yeah, there's also an expander for traffic. So if you're looking at traffic, maybe look at that one too. It does envelopes. So yeah, traffic is pretty cool, but I don't have a BIA. What do I want with traffic? Why would I jump on traffic on pre-order no less? It comes down to something that I mentioned in my last video. Link up top, by the way. Since I don't have a ton of modules, anything that I'm adding to the case, I wanna make sure that it doesn't overlap with anything else and also has really good value for the space and money. Traffic definitely offers up something unique in 6HP for me. To patch something like it, I need a bunch of offsets, VCAs, and a triggered switch. And that's without the random and bipolar switches. There are other preset modules, but traffic is probably the smallest. Definitely high value for the space. When I saw it, it reminded me of some percussion patches that I made when I only had a couple modules. I was using the BeatStep Pro at that time to drive everything, so more or less set and forget. I think traffic offers up more immediacy and flexibility. Just depends on what you pair it with. For me, I was most excited to pair it with Pizza and MCO to see what I could pull from those things. MCO's got the morphing wave shape and Pizza just has a lot of timbres and inputs, so I figured those would pair really well with each other. Presets are such a simple idea, but I feel like they're pretty powerful when you pair them with different modules. I don't know about you, but I feel like that's the brilliance of modular. Figuring out which modules play really well with other ones to make something that's really compelling. There's so many patches that can begin with, what can this modulate? So yeah, I'd say traffic is a pretty good building block for my case. Let's take a listen and see what patches I got into. These are basically the first patches that I made once I got traffic going. In this patch, what's going on? MCO is basically doing all the drum stuff. I have a little bit of help with the rample for a little bit of extra kick, but other than that, all the drum sounds are coming from MCO. The whole flow of how traffic is working is this is controlling the amplitude of an envelope. The envelope is coming from the Ocoast and that's going in through veils. And it's basically like controlling the amplitude of what that envelope is and that's going into the acid rain switchblade. Oh, and I'm basically using that envelope to control pitch so that we can have like a little bit of a boo, you know, like for the kick drum. So that's going to pitch. That's summed with another channel, this top channel, that's setting the bass pitch of what the MCO is. And then this one is controlling the wave shape. The kick is going to more of a, like a sine wave. This is staying on noise, and this is staying on noise for the most part. 
So first channel is kick, second channel is snare, and third channel are hats. That's going into ghost. Other than that, the trigger sequence is coming from steppy, kick, snare, and hats. The bass voice is pizza going through the carbon filter and veils for VCA. Uh, we have the Okos being the high frequency voice on top. And then gate sequences from that are coming from the Acid Rain Constellation, which I just got, which kind of spurred on a little bit of what this video is. Here, let's just get into the jam because I'm running out of time. Right, let's bring in some of the drums. And the kick. right here to get random values. So I can explain kind of what's going on here. Basically what's happening is triggers are being sent into traffic from Steppy. Those are being malted in a couple different places to say produce other envelopes from Baker. Those are being sent to various different places to either VCA stuff on veils or to modulate things on pizza. The one voice, which is pizza, is going into ghost. After ghost is mimeophone and that's just uh, pulling in those extra little bursts of sound because that way it's like a really defined repeating thing and then that's also modulated by the steps here on the variegate. Variegate is also controlling pitch but that's also going to the 3x MIA um, into the centennial verter and offset so I'm using those two to change pitches make things more interesting. Harmony is being modulated here on the Bard Quartet, so you'll see this is swapping through a couple different scale presets. Other than that, I'll just jam it out. This is not my typical jam, but you know, uh, this is sort of one of those aspects where you just 
follow where the patch is leading. In this case, this is where I was going. This channel unveils is uh, the octave out from pizza. Channel three of the Ramble is going direct out into channel three here on Bales. That's also going through the Mimi phone. Well, the funnest part of this is the drums. So here we go. Little surprise, drums are going through the carbon, so. Watch this.
Okay, in this patch, what's going on is, I guess, a lot of things. I'm using traffic to basically do some presets on the effects. So you'll notice the reverb kind of change over time depending on the drum hits. The drum hits are coming from Constellation and that is being reset quite frequently by Steppy. Mimeophone is doing the effects on the lead, so like what we're hearing right now. Lead and bass are going through Mimeophone and then Ghost is doing all the effects for the drums. Variegate is our main sequence. What I have is four different sequences kind of mashed together and then going through Bard Quartet to basically create a more interesting, longer pattern. Uh, one of them is from channel three of Variegate right here. Going in to A on channel one. B is basically like a transposition coming from the Bard Quartet. So every now and then notice that it's changing like up and down a little bit. I can't entirely remember where all of the modulation is coming from for this. Pizza is our main voice, uh, Ocoast is doing the bass, and the envelope for the bass is coming from the Ocoast. Baker is doing the envelope for Pizza, and that's just going to the index mod, I think. Oh, it's also going into the BCA. There's also some modulation on the flop coming from Constellation going into Pizza. I know I have Constellation here, but I'm really just scratching the surface of it, so I'll probably cover it in another video more extensively, but that's there, still trying to figure it out. Anyhow, uh, 3XMA is basically controlling how much voltage is going in and then ultimately going through channel one of Bard Quartet. So this is the variegate there. Let's turn this up. obviously really high so we'll attenuate it a little bit but that's just eight steps repeating so let's bring in channel two here from the Bard Quartet Very good. Has some slew to it. Let's bring in some drums. reverb that's happening ultimately on these presets.
envelope for a baker is happening all the time. I have this on Switchblade. I'll turn that off. that I keep finding new uses for that are interesting. I'm pretty sure traffic will be similar. It's a great utility that can offer up a lot in a patch. Presets are fun, new modules are fun too, and 
part of the exploration of modular, but it definitely helps to be critical about what you're adding to the case before you spend all your money. Just remember, someone else's workflow isn't yours. It's actually great to slow down and figure out what your workflow is each step of the way. I find that mine changes each module that I get, so giving it a little bit of time to all gel together is really helpful. I seem to make my best patches that way. I find that each module that I add changes that flow, and it takes a little bit of time to get fully integrated. That's not really a negative though, it's a fun process. Some modules I've loved right after powering them up, others have taken a little bit more time. That's okay. It'll take a little bit of time to figure out how each thing works best for you. I hope your next patch has a really good flow. Take your time, and feel free to share any of your discoveries down in the comments. I think my next video might be on a sweet new prototype, so subscribe if you want to see what it is. Anyway, more videos to come. Cheers.